Hello again. Uh, today I want to talk about the log decrement, uh, which is uh, a property uh, that can be calculated based on the response of the system. So this actually only applies uh, to underdam system. As you could see here, this is a graph of an underdam system. So and the solution to an underdam system x as a function of time is equal to some constant a e to the minus zeta damping ratio omega n natural frequency times t times sine of omega d which is the damped frequency times t plus some phase angle so this is solution to an underdamped system and the whole concept of log decrement only applies to an underdamped system so here you see that this uh, uh, displacement uh, x is uh, getting the amplitude getting it sp smaller and smaller and then this decay is within this envelope so actually this is this dash line here basically that shows how the system is decaying you see this sine wave its amplitude is getting smaller and smaller so here between peak to peak we have the damped period t sub d and t sub d which is called the damped period uh, is actually 2 pi divided by omega sub d okay now let's go ahead and define uh, the log decrement log decrement first of all denoted by delta typically it's the natural log not log natural log of the uh, ratio of amplitude to consecutive amplitude so here we have x1 and x2 so it could be actually x2 to x3. Don't worry about this one and a half amplitude. Uh, so, you know, so it's two consecutive amplitudes. The ratio of that, you take the natural log and that would be delta. So now, if we go through the uh, determination of delta, the whole idea is can we describe delta in terms of zeta, the damping ratio, and eventually write zeta in terms of delta. And you'll see later on in an example how uh, this is very convenient in design and very useful um, for, say, a suspension system of a car. Okay, so let's go ahead and say what is x1. What x1 happens at time t1? So here, in place of t, I'm going to put t1 and also here. So that would be some constant a, e to the minus zeta omega n t1 sine omega d t1 plus theta then x2 is going to be the same thing a but this time I'm going to put time t2 so now I have sine omega d t2 plus theta now keep in mind guys that um, the, uh, the difference between time t1 and t2 is that this is time t1 and this is time t2 so the difference is that T2 is T1 plus the damped period. So if you come here and replace this guy by T1 plus the damped period in that exponent and do the same thing here as T1 plus the damped period and of course you have to multiply it by omega sub d what will happen is that first of all when you do the ratio of these two right because eventually we have to do the ratio and then take natural log of it a and a cancel so let me go to the next page and show you exactly what happens so remember now delta is what delta is natural log of this uh, x1 over x2 now I got already got rid of the uh, uh, a but look what happens now. I have minus zeta omega and t1 sine omega dt1, right? This is x1, right? But now look what happens. Uh, I have e to the minus zeta omega and t1 plus t sub d here, right? And then I have sine omega d times t1 plus omega d times t sub d plus theta. Right? So what will happen is that eventually omega d times t sub d actually becomes 2 pi. Right? 
based on what you saw earlier. You see that? Omega d times t sub d is 2 pi. So actually, if you replace this guy by 2 pi here, you see that if you add to an angle, whatever that angle is, a 2 pi, the sign of that is going to be the same. So you're getting back to the same place if you add 360 degrees. So actually, these two are going to get canceled. And then that brings us to, finally, uh, delta equal to natural log of, and look what, what I'm going to do. I'm going to expand the denominator. See? I could actually break this into two exponents. Right? And then these two get cancelled. And this is a negative exponent. It comes up actually as positive. And eventually when you take natural log of an e, since they are inverse of one another, look what happens. Delta simply becomes uh, zeta. First of all, negative becomes positive when you bring it up. It becomes that. And keep in mind that t sub d is 2 pi uh, divided by omega sub d. Now, what I forgot to tell you is that omega sub d, which is the damped frequency, is related to the natural frequency and the damping ratio. That's the relation. So if uh, delta, from what you saw a minute ago, is equal to zeta omega n t sub d, and t sub d is, remember t sub d is what? 2 pi divided by omega d, and then if I replace omega d by omega n, square root of 1 minus zeta squared, uh, you see that actually omega n gets cancelled, so delta actually becomes uh, 2 pi zeta divided by square root of 1 minus zeta squared. So you see how we related delta to zeta. But actually, if you rearrange the equation and solve, actually, uh, solve for zeta in terms of delta, that's the equation that is actually more useful. And we just, some manipulation of the equation, the equation becomes actually zeta equal delta, which is the log decrement, divided by 4 pi squared plus delta squared. Uh, so thanks for listening. What I'm going to do in the next video, hopefully I will show you an example of this and how it's this is going to help you with the design of, like, let's say, a suspension system if you, if, for whatever response you want from your system. Thank you again.